Hey there, I'm Umesh Singh and welcome to Themyscira. It is a land of magic and wonder, worth cherishing in every way. Today we'll be continuing with my in-depth analysis of Wonder Woman. Note that this video series will freely discuss various aspects of the film, some of which could be considered spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, then go ahead and watch the film before continuing with this video. You have been warned. While editing an earlier video, I realized that I'd mistakenly deleted some of my analysis, so I've re-recorded it and included it here. Back in the history lesson sequence, there were a couple more child at play versus woman at war connections. Let's analyze how these shots are visualized and how they compare to certain shots later in the film. In this first shot, young Diana rides a white horse, perhaps symbolizing innocence, happiness or prosperity, through a field of yellow flowers. The shot is warmly lit, Diana rides from right to left, and the action is captured in slow motion. This evokes a feeling of nostalgia for those carefree moments of childhood. By contrast, when the Germans, who are in pursuit of Steve Trevor, land on the beach and attack, we see Antiope lead a cavalry charge. Antiope rides a black horse, which can symbolize the unknown or uncertainty. She rides from left to right in the frame, the lighting is neutral, and the action is captured in a mixture of slow motion and real time. The arrival of the cavalry, a literal here comes the cavalry moment, evokes a false sense of relief in Diana that Antiope, the greatest general in their history, would save the day and that all would be okay. But things are not so simple. In the third shot, after Diana witnesses the genocide at Velt, we see her ride with absolute conviction to confront Ludendorff at the airfield. In this shot, Diana rides a dark horse, again perhaps symbolizing uncertainty, through a dark forest. The lighting is cold, Diana rides from left to right in the frame, and the action is captured in real time. So this is a literal and stylistic 180 degree turn compared to how the earlier shot was visualized. These three shots illustrate an evolution of Diana's thoughts and feelings about battle and war. Coming back to the first shot, here we see young Diana riding through a field of flowers. These particular flowers are rapeseed, also known as rape according to Wikipedia. Also note that the mistreatment of civilians during the invasion and occupation of Belgium in World War I is known as the Rape of Belgium. Here she imagines being a hero while in the middle of a field of rape. Later, when she finds herself in the midst of the rape of Belgium, she is morally compelled to rise and become the hero in the eyes of the villagers. Okay, in this next shot, we have Antiope and Diana on an elevated platform, perhaps a lookout point, and Antiope is teaching young Diana sword combat. Later, Diana will confront Ludendorff in the watchtower at the Belgian airfield. She will engage in melee combat and will ultimately kill Ludendorff with the guard killer sword. This happens on the roof of the air traffic control tower which is essentially an elevated platform. Okay so having those previous shots covered let's move forward with scene 5 and 6. The training sequence. The scene opens with Antiope giving Diana sword combat training. In the background we can see a ram. Now Ares is one of the constellations of the zodiac. The name Aries is Latin for Ram. The planet associated with this constellation is Mars, named after the Roman equivalent of the god of war Aries. The particular breed here is the Jacob sheep. It typically has multiple horns, and in this particular case the ram has four horns. As we saw in the history lesson sequence, Aries' helmet is also depicted with four horns. So in this scene, the ram can be interpreted as representing the threat of Ares, for which Antiope is driven to train Diana. As Hippolyta arrives on the scene and discovers that Diana is being trained in secret, we can see that Diana is juxtaposed with a white peacock. Back in my history lesson sequence analysis, I mentioned how the ancient Greeks believed that peafowl were a symbol of immortality. As the Amazons are immortals, the metaphor could be extended to them as well. So with that in mind, let's analyze the positioning of these birds in different shots in this scene. When Hippolyta confronts Antiope, we switch to a reverse angle and we see peafowl in the bottom right corner. These two peahens mirror Hippolyta and Antiope, with the one on the left facing camera and pointing to the right, 
while the one on the right is facing away from camera. In the shade of the tree just behind Diana, there is a peacock which represents Diana. And further to the left is a ram which represents Ares. Due to the landscape, the ram is uphill of the peacock, which shows that Ares is in a position of superiority to Diana. Antiope faces this problem, while Hippolyta has her back turned on the problem. Placement of the ram, the peacock and the other peahens also show a separation between Diana and the Amazons. This could be interpreted as symbolic of how Diana is more godlike than the Amazons, with her demigod status confirmed in the final act. And it could also represent how Diana will have to leave the Amazons behind in order to confront Ares by herself. After we see a couple of shots of Vanilla leading Diana away to the palace, we switch to a shot of Hippolyta that is filmed over Antiope's shoulder. Antiope then walks away from camera saying, you left me no choice Hippolyta, as Hippolyta turns and tracks her. As Hippolyta turns, in the background we can see the ram hovering over the peacock. This is Antiope's concern, the threat of Ares which hangs over Diana. Antiope continues, you neglect your duty if she cannot fight. We then switch to another shot of Hippolyta filmed over Antiope's shoulder again. She shares her rationalizations and says, he might never return. As she says this, we see Diana being led to the palace in the background. It is clear that Hippolyta's only concern is that of Diana, and her strategy is basically to shelter Diana in the comfort and seclusion of Themyscira. As the dialogue continues, in the background, we can see the horse with which Hippolyta arrived at the scene, now being positioned between Hippolyta and Antiope. Jumping back a few shots, when Hippolyta arrived on the scene, the horse pointed to the left. However, as the dialogue plays out, the horse points more and more towards Antiope. This mirrors how Antiope steers Hippolyta's thinking, changing her mind, but allowing Diana to continue combat training, and Antiope succeeds. As Hippolyta orders that Diana is to be trained harder than any Amazon before, in order to become the most skilled fighter, we cut to the training ground scene, where we have the reveal of adult Diana being portrayed by Cloudy. She is framed centrally with a shield on her back, which ties to the No Man's Land scene. The JLU podcast team identified another detail here in her training outfit. You'll notice that it incorporates design elements which spiral around Diana, much like the structure which holds the God Killer sword in place at the armory. So this is an early hint that Diana is the God Killer. There are numerous antelope skulls mounted around the training ground. This could be symbolic of Ares, since Diana is training in order to be prepared to defend herself from Ares. Alternatively, this could be foreshadowing the heavy casualties that the Amazons will suffer in the beach battle scene. There are also a few moments here on the training ground that pay off in later action scenes. Diana practicing archery, she ropes an opponent's leg, and she also discovers her bracelet blast ability, also called the bush ability. We call it the bush. I know it's weird. The bush. The bush. The What's bush. That? Oh, I and like it I... even more now. Because <laughs> whenever I go for it, she does the bush, right? Ah, oh, bush. So Patty and I, Patty Jenkins, the director, and I was we were one asked, "What's our favorite movement of Wonder Woman?" And I said, "I love Wonder Woman's bush." <laughs> and then I said, mm, "We need to come up with a different name." Well. Towards the end of the scene, there are also a few lines of dialogue that formed Antiope's final lesson. Never let your guard down. You expect the battle to be fair. A battle will never be fair. During the beach battle scene, an invading soldier takes aim to shoot Diana in the back. Antiope sees this and jumps in the line of fire in order to take the bullet meant for Diana. Diana had let her guard down. She expected her opponents to fight her face to face and the invaders' advanced weapons gave them an unfair advantage in terms of ranged combat. Antiope's lines can also relate to other scenes further along in the film, but I'll cover those in due course. So that concludes my thoughts on the Wonder Woman training sequence. Thank you so much for watching, feel free to leave your thoughts down below, and if you found this video interesting, please like, share and discuss it with fans of great cinema. I hope you'll join me as I delve deeper into Wonder Woman in future episodes. Thank you so much for watching and always I wish you peace, joy and love.